I've been on a bit of a roll lately about scams in the trucking industry and here's one of the biggest scams around that's lumpers. Section 15 chapter 49 paragraph 14103 of the Motor Carrier Act talks about lumping and when it's legal and when it becomes illegal. Now it's not illegal for a big grocery chain to allow an outside company or lumpers to unload the freight. That's not illegal. Where the procedure becomes illegal and where drivers have the most trouble with it is at the end of the day the driver cannot end up out of pocket. If the driver is not reimbursed for the unloading or the loading or the lumpers the law has been broken. Further the law has also been broken and it's broken all the time when these lumpers don't declare their income to the IRS. So the law is being broken twice. For company guys, you've got to be careful. When you start with a carrier, that's one of the first things that you've got to establish is whether or not in your job description, part of your job description is to unload trailers, hand bomb trailers, unload trailers or load trailers. You've got to find that out right from the get-go because the favorite line of trucking companies and brokers is oh, it's built into the rate. Well if you're making 35 cents a mile and you come across an unloading situation where you've got to hand bond the freight off or pay the lumper, your rate doesn't go up. You're still at 35 cents a mile and you're sitting at the dock for free and they want you to unload. So it's not built into the rate or if it has been built into the rate the carrier has pocketed that and not passed it on to you. The law is broken when the driver is not reimbursed the lumping fee. Owner operators, again, it's got to be part of your contractual agreement with the carrier as to how this is covered. You shouldn't be rolling into a new warehouse and then finding out you're a hundred bucks out of pocket at a grocery warehouse for lumping. It's okay to lay it out, get a proper receipt, but then the company's got to reimburse you. Someone's got to reimburse you and this is where the tricky part comes in because the grocery chain sure is not going to want to reimburse you. So it's got to come from the carrier. If you're an independent, you've been around long enough to know these tricks and know right away if you're pulling a load broker load, you need to establish with that load broker who's paying for the unloading. And if it's going to be you, they've got to put an extra 100 or 200 bucks on your rate. And if it's got to be a lumper, they've also got to build that into your rate so you can pass it on to them. But at no point should you be out of pocket. Now these big grocery chains really like this because it saves them millions of dollars every year because instead of having to hire and pay employees to run their warehouse and unload their freight, they allow these, these lumpers to do it and the warehouses aren't out of pocket at all. It's just sort of a scan they brush onto the truckers and the trucking companies and it all works out. And it's such a confusing process that most of the time the driver ends up short the lumper fee doesn't know who to turn to for reimbursement, doesn't get reimbursed, everyone just throws their hands up and says it's built into the rate and the trucker gets screwed. And this is the problem with it. Now lumping is basically an out of date thing anymore. You're, you rarely run across this anymore in trucking, mostly because guys are smart enough just to refuse to get involved in it. But it's still fairly common in these big grocery chain warehouses. So establish when you're hired Who's paying to unload the freight and go from there and hold their feet to the fire because everybody learns the hard way once with something like this. Lumpers, lumpers can be very difficult to avoid. But at the end of the day, if you're out of pocket, it's an illegal activity. Now, particularly for Canadian drivers going into the U.S. and they'll be confronted with a lumper situation, announce to the, uh, to the warehouse that you're going to contact the sheriff's department because you're violating immigration laws right there by taking work away from an American. It's like interstating or cabotaging. You're not allowed to take work away from an American. So if they're demanding that you do that, they're breaking the law. Apparently, you can contact the Sheriff's Department. They'll come right down and, and settle the whole thing out right there and make the warehouse unload it. I've also been told by guys that the Sheriff's Department will come down and straighten out a lumper dispute even for American guys because if there's money changed hands it becomes almost petty theft if the trucker's not reimbursed. 
So be careful on this. Lumpers, lumpers are a scam. Don't get taken. Everyone generally gets caught once in a situation, but when you find yourself out of pocket a hundred bucks, it's, it's not likely that you'll make that same mistake again. What else is just amazing about these lumping situations is you'll load the load and let's say it's a five block, four high. Then you'll get to the warehouse you're delivering to and they'll want a four block, five high, and they'll want you to restack every pallet on the truck. And that's crap. That's between the shipper and the receiver. That's got nothing to do with you. If the warehouse wants it at a certain height, it's up to them to get a hold of the shipper and those two need to communicate. But it's not up to you to become the warehouseman to rearrange every pallet on the truck to their liking. You're the truck driver. Don't get involved in their warehousing issues. That's their problem. That's not your job. Your job is to drive the truck safely. So why is this practice still continuing today when it's illegal? Well, it's, it's basically the same thing as, as U.S. immigration. It's, the illegality of it is on the books. It's just not enforced. And that's how the Americans ended up with 12 million Mexicans, illegal aliens in their country. It's just not enforced. And it's the same thing with these big grocery houses. They know that it's illegal, but if it's not enforced, hey, it's saving them millions. And why not? It's just a law that's not enforced and the truckers getting caught in these situations. Will big companies do this? It happens all the time. Big companies are not above twisting and bending laws if it saves them money. Look at the Pilot Flying J fuel scam. Look at the carriers shorting the driver's mileage. And this is just another example. Here's, here's warehousing getting free labor funded by truck drivers. They haven't been caught. It saves them millions. They're going to continue. So be aware of this practice. It may cost you money and it shouldn't be costing you money. God knows you're making little enough as it is without having to pay some warehouse to receive their own freight. It's, it's phenomenal and it's just, you know, it's mind boggling. You can hardly believe that some guy would have to pay the warehouse to receive their own freight. But that's basically what it boils down to. You're paying them to take their load off your trailer. Establish with your carrier right from the get go who's responsible and then don't be bullied after that. It just boils my blood to see truck drivers getting ripped off like this. So don't be a victim of this lumping practice. I thought before I go, I share a, a funny story with you that I had experienced. A couple of friends of mine and I were uh, running west on I-80. We stopped into Grand Island, Nebraska, as, as we always did when we were headed out that way. Generally, we'd, we'd take on some fuel and some food and maybe go a little farther, or maybe spend the night there. We pulled into the fuel islands. This is this is back in the 80s when the, the big bunks were all the rage. One of my friends pulled in to the fuel islands where the water hose was, and they kept water hoses at the fuel islands for washing down your windshield and stuff like that. He had a, a flap on the side of his big bunk that he could tap in, put water in, and it would fill his water container in the bunk so his sink would work. So he would fill up this oh, no, 10 gallon container underneath his sink in this big bunk and then use it for washing dishes or whatever you want to use it for. So we pull into the fuel islands and he turns on the hose, plugs it into this little receptacle in his bunk and starts talking away to us and he's, he's filling up the tank. Well, after about 10 minutes, a couple of us are starting to wonder just how big this holding tank for water is in his bunk because he's still standing there holding it and the water's still going in. Well, he's waiting for the water to spit back out when the tank is full. But what's happened is the hose into the holding tank inside the bunk has come off. So basically he's filling the whole bunk with water. And he went quite a while before one of us finally said, I forget who it was, pointed it out to him and said, you know, how much water does that thing hold? You've been there for 15 minutes now. And at that point he realized, he quit talking, he realized, yeah, that's, that's true. Pulled the hose out, hopped into the truck, and he had this much water on the floor of the bunk. The hose had disconnected. It was kind of hard not to laugh. It wrecked the carpet in the bunk, but it was just one of those stupid things that happened. We laughed, fueled up and carried on, and he spent the next four hours with a bucket and a sponge in the bunk trying to get his carpets dry again. Anyway, take care, and I'll see you on the backhaul.